Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. A Democratic president is now poised to put a justice on the U.S. Supreme Court for the first time in more than a decade. As soon as this week, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson will be confirmed to the court with bipartisan support. And that's despite the best efforts of some Senate Republicans who tried to essentially assassinate Judge Jackson's character by painting her as sympathetic to child abusers. The behavior by Republicans in the House and in the U.S. Senate, particularly at the hearings, has been disturbing. Shocking language and rhetoric used as a political smear by people who, well, know better. I want to make certain that we protect children and that we continue to do our best effort to protect children. I also want to make certain that we're going to have judges on the federal bench and justices that are going to protect those rights of children. Significant concern has been raised by myself and others uh, about Judge Jackson's uh, pattern in sentencing criminal defendants guilty of either possession or distribution of child pornography. We're talking about eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds and 11-year-olds and 12-year-olds. He's got images of these the government said added up to over 600 images, gobs of video footage of these children but you say this does not signal a heinous or egregious child pornography offense. Just to be clear, that pattern that Cruz was talking about was nonsense. It was no different than many other federal judges, some of whom were Republicans, some of whom sailed through confirmation. And of course, not every Republican senator joined in that despicable behavior. In fact, three of them said they would vote to confirm Judge Jackson. And for that crime, those senators were attacked by Republican Party star Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who said they were being, quote, pro-pedophile. Pro-pedophile. When Green first joined the House, her overt sympathies for the QAnon conspiracy theory, which believes that Democrats, the so-called deep state, and the media are secretly part of a massive child trafficking ring, that was a big deal. She had to go back and, like, delete a bunch of posts, and it was something of a political problem for Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. But alas, as time has moved on, the parties only moved towards Green and embraced QAnon. And that's why they tried to make Judge Jackson's hearing a referendum on whether you are not, in Marjorie Taylor Greene's words here, pro or anti-pedophile. That's what it is. Republicans are cultivating this. They have been for a long time. You could trace it back to the 2016 election when the so-called Pizzagate conspiracy theory came into being, which emerged out of the hacked emails that were published. And that bizarre and inscrutable theory alleged that Hillary Clinton and prominent Democrats ran a child sex and sacrifice ring out of the basement of a popular D.C. based pizza restaurant called Comet Ping Pong Pizza, which, by the way, doesn't have a basement. But the conspiracy percolated in far right media. And then this happened. Under arrest in Washington, 28-year-old Edgar Welch, accused of firing an assault weapon inside the Comet Ping Pong Pizza Restaurant. Welch allegedly told police he came to investigate Pizzagate, an internet rumor alleging a Clinton campaign child sex ring. An armed man gets himself to the pizza shop and shows up with an assault rifle, which he fired because he had been told and believed that the Democrats were running a satanic child sex ring in the building's non-existent basement. That man, by the way, was sentenced to four years in jail by none other than then District Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. But here's the thing. Republicans were and still are actively cultivating the dangerous fringe beliefs that that individual held. According to one recent poll, 16% of Americans, that's 16% of Americans, not a majority, but a sizable amount, believe, and I quote, the government, media, and financial worlds in the U.S. are controlled by a group of Satan-worshipping pedophiles who run a global child sex trafficking operation. Think about your belief system to answer yes to that question. 25% of the Republican Party identify as QAnon believers. Now, these Republican politicians and their allies in conservative media cannot just come out and say... There is an evil cabal of liberals running a child sex trafficking ring around the world dominated by George Soros, the Rothschilds, and the Clintons, and they also worship Satan. They realize they sound nuts. So instead, they find these not-so-clever ways to play footsie with the people that do believe that, that make up at least a quarter of the base of their party. Like accusing Judge Jackson of being sympathetic to child abusers, wink, wink. Or adopting the slogan, save the children, which of course sounds 
perfectly noble, innocent enough on its face, but as Associate Press reports, has actually become a dog whistle to QAnon supporters. Or, more recently, through vague allegations of grooming, an age-old smear to imply that members of LGBTQ community are trying to prime children for sexual abuse. That appears to be the case in Florida and the basis behind the state's so-called Don't Say Gay Bill, which prohibits the discussion, the discussion in class of sexual orientation or gender identity in classrooms for young children. Now, some Republicans will try to lie and say the bill is the laws about parents' rights or other nonsense. But Republican Governor Ron DeSantis' spokesperson gave away the whole game. She, sort of like Marjorie Taylor Greene, wasn't quite like with it enough to kind of keep it quiet. She said, the bill that liberals inaccurately called Don't Say Gay would be more accurately described as the anti-grooming bill. And quote, if you're against the anti-grooming bill, you're probably a groomer. Or at least you don't denounce the grooming of 48-year-old children. Silence is complicit in. Just, I want everyone to focus on what she is accusing people of here. There it is. She said the quiet part loud. If you don't agree with the bill, you are actively culturating young children to sexually abuse them. Everything you don't like is the work of this nefarious cabal of pedophiles who are literally attempting to institutionalize systematic sexual molestation of children. If you're a Democrat, you're either a pedophile or a pedophile sympathizer. If you're a gay teacher who mentions... I don't know, going away with your husband this weekend, you're doing the same. And this rhetoric, it's not fringe, that's the spokesperson, Ron DeSantis, become omnipresent in right-wing media. Just this past week, Fox News had a collective meltdown accusing Disney, the Disney Corporation of all companies, of grooming children. If you really want to talk to a five-year-old or a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old about their sexuality and, and gender, that's on you. You're a pervert. You're a weirdo. The fact that they want to sexualize our children and our children's childhoods for their own political agenda is incredibly disturbing. Why not just rename the roller coaster, you know, Sex Mountain? Come on, kids. It'll be a blast. Okay. I, there's a lot to say about this, but by the way, you go look at the Disney canon. Just, like, fire up the old... Uh, Little Mermaid, okay? <laughs> See, like, you know, the, the teenager who sells her voice because a guy was cute? Okay, so just that to start with. But to be clear, this is QAnon all the way down. Republicans are repurposing old smears to taint Democrats as part of a shadowy cabal of child sex abusers. And again, what's so disgusting and, and gross about this is that, of course, child sexual abuse is an extremely real problem shockingly ubiquitous, in fact, everywhere throughout society, in all kinds of institutions, across the political and cultural spectrum, liberal, conservative, secular, religious, just all over the place. No one's got a monopoly on it. Like, I don't know, let me think of an example. Like, I don't know, the longest serving Republican Speaker of the House. The fallout keeps growing tonight over the surprise indictment of former House Speaker Dennis Hastert. The allegations that Hastert was willing to pay millions to cover up sexual misconduct with a male student have shocked many, especially in Yorkville, Illinois. That's where Hastert used to coach and teach. A male student when he was uh, a wrestling coach there. It's odd, isn't it? The Republicans never bring up Dennis Hastert, who was accused of child sexual abuse when they were talking about the apparent cabal of pedophiles in the government. Or former Republican Congressman Mark Foley, who, of course, resigned in disgrace after he was caught sending sexually explicit messages to teenage boys who worked as congressional pages. Or failed Republican Senate candidate from Alabama, Judge Roy Moore, who leading Republicans, including Trump, defended after he was accused of pursuing sexual relationships with teenage girls while he was in his 30s, including one girl he pursued while she was 14 years old and he was 32 after they met at the courthouse where her mother was appearing for a child custody hearing. Think about that. Now, he denies this, but I leave the word for that kind of behavior, again, if it happened, maybe you believe Roy Moore, is grooming. Right-wing media closed ranks around Moore. The Federalist even ran an op-ed defending his content, conduct as alleged, writing, quote, to have a large family, the wife must start having kids when she is young. The husband needs to be well-established and able to support the family, in which case he will typically need to marry when older. 
Again, a 14-year-old at her mom's child custody hearing getting hit on, allegedly, by a 32-year-old prosecutor outside the courthouse. Donald Trump even endorsed Moore's run after the allegation surfaced that that's what he was doing. Or, I don't know, here's another example. How about the time that Tucker Carlson decided to defend Warren Jeffs, the fundamentalist cult leader, currently in prison for child rape? Carlson said that he's in prison for his, quote, weird and unpopular beliefs, like the forced marriage of underage girls. He was convicted of two counts of felony child sexual assault. Tucker thought that was unjustified. Actually, right now, there's a sitting member of Congress on the House Judiciary Committee, Republican Matt Gates, who is reportedly under investigation, federal investigation for sex trafficking underage girl. That's, again, something he denies. And, you know, innocent proved guilty. Hasn't even been charged. But again, <laughs> if you're a party that's super, super, super keyed into this, you might be a little worried about that, right? Maybe have a little conversation with him. What's going on there? Oh, yes, and Tennessee Republicans have a bill they advanced today, actually, that would, and I am not making this up, and I didn't believe it when I thought so, but I actually read it through, to eliminate any minimum age requirement for marriage right now in 2022. Right now it is a minimum of 17 years, and they're going to just get rid of the minimum age. Now, if Democrats did any of these things, like that Tennessee bill, the right would lose its collective mind, and it would call them groomers and pedophiles. But of course, again, this is all bad faith. There's not an actual interest in protecting children here. It's not motivating it, which is part of what makes it so disgusting because children do need protection. But this is a disgusting and cynical attempt to render the political opposition essentially as hateable as possible, as sort of irredeemably evil, like the worst thing you could be. It's loathsome, and they know what they're doing.